So this is a good problem. It's fairly simple. We've got a wire bent in the shape of a parabola. And we've got a representation for the density function. Okay? We're asked to calculate the total mass of the wire. So, you know, it's, it's just a basic example. Let's draw in... our curve, and we're only interested in the curve between, say, y, uh, x equals 1 and 4. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to do this using path integrals. What we need to do, firstly, is parameterize that, that curve segment, that red, red line. Anyone have any idea how we can do it? Let's, let's say using some, some variable t. <coughs> Anyone? Yes, who said that? Who? Yes. Why? Why did you use t comma t squared? Correct. Okay, you can see here this is just a function of x. If under that condition, I can always choose a parameterization involving this. Okay? So, let's parameterize C via T, so instead of F of T to be T squared, well, it is T squared, and again, T's, T's driving here really, you know, you could think of T as X if you wanted to. T's going to be between 1 and 4. Okay? So now, let's compute the derivative and its magnitude, the, the, the tangent vector. So you differentiate each of these components. And work out the magnitude. So again, square each component, add them and take the square root. Okay, I can't really do much with that at, at the moment. Okay, so along my curve, the density function is just, well, we replace y with t squared and x with t. So, so I can cancel off, I'll get t. And all I really need to do now is put those things together and integrate to calculate the total mass. So let's, let's note the total mass by m. This is the uh, general expression that we're going to compute with. And all we need to do is just plug in. So here A is going to be positive 1, B is going to be positive 4. Uh, the density function along the curve is going to be T. And the magnitude of the tangent vector is this square root expression. Okay, so... We've come down to some sort of <coughs> integral that we want to evaluate. Sometimes these are easy, sometimes they're not so easy. For this one, anyone know? I mean, I could just write it down, but anybody know the, the, how I would calculate that, the antiderivative of that, if I wanted to sort of justify it? Anyone? Uh... Well, if I look inside the square root sign, I've got 1 plus 4t squared, right? Inside the square root sign. 
and I've got a t that's multiplying. Now, if I differentiate 1 plus 4t squared, I almost get t. Okay? So I've kind of got a, um, a chain rule type, um, you know, substitution type integration going on here. So if I wanted to do it formally, I would let u equal 1 plus 4t squared, right? I'd let u equal 1 plus 4t squared, then I'd calculate du dt, and it's almost that. Okay, so actually what I can do here, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that, I'll, I'll let you do that. Essentially, what I know is that the root, the, the power of one half here is going to go to three on two. And all I need to do is touch up the front. Okay, so when I differentiate this, the three on two is going to come to the front, so I want to multiply by two on three. When I differentiate, uh, when the de derivative of this, when that comes to the front, that's going to be 8t. So I want to, I've already got a t there, so I want to just divide by 8. Okay? So when I put in t equals 4 and t equals 1, and cancel out here, I should get the following. Oops. Okay, so this should be 65 to the power 3 on 2. Okay.